Hello, everyone, and welcome to today's ILTA webinar, Microsoft 365, Combining Office 365, Security, Collaboration, and more. Our speakers today are Jim Morio with Cornerstone IT and Jeff Fabian with Microsoft. And I want to thank Cornerstone IT for sponsoring today's webinar. Today's presentation will run about 45 to 60 minutes, and we ask that you please submit all of your questions into the Q&A box. And if those are not answered during the presentation, they will be addressed at the end. Please know that we're recording today's session and we'll post a link to our website under recordings shortly after today's presentation. At the end, we ask that you please take a few moments to complete the evaluation. I'll now turn the webinar over to Jim. Thank you, Marsha. Thank you very much. And, and thank you, Adriana, our marketing person, for working with Marsha and putting today's presentation together. Um, my name is Jim Mori. I'm one of the principals at Cornerstone IT. I'm joined by uh, Jeff Fabin. He's one of the uh, senior modern workplace channel managers at Microsoft. Uh, he's our go-to guy whenever we need uh, answers to complex Microsoft licensing, and, and I'm grateful to have him on the uh, uh, presenting today. Uh, I'll give a quick pitch about Cornerstone on the next slide uh, before we get into it. Cornerstone IT, we're a uh, legal-focused business solution provider. We've been in business for be 17 years this January, started when I was four. Uh, we have a lot of experience in the, in the uh, legal industry and, and working with Microsoft licensing and Office 365. Um, and we understand the IT of, of law firms. So whether you move in Office 365 or Windows upgrades or document management migrations, Cornerstone brings best practices so that you, uh, the law firm, don't need to reinvent the wheel. Uh, we specialize in data migration, whether it's moving to Office 365 or moving your document management system to the cloud. Uh, Cornerstone has that experience in data migration. And then we also provide managed services after uh, the project's been completed. The agenda for today is uh, well, let me give you a little background on, on how we came about this this webinar. Uh, obviously, a lot of firms look a lot of firms are looking at uh, Exchange Online uh, and buying Office 365 licenses and the Office suite that comes with it. But then we're also finding a lot of firms uh, duplicating uh, some of their licenses. They may have SCCM or Intune or or other type of mobile device management out there, and uh, we're finding that um, that the Microsoft suite of licenses or subscription, which includes Office 365 and other features, is becoming a very good fit, uh, cost-effective fit for, for law firms. So that's the purpose of this, uh, of this presentation, is really kind of explain the difference. There's, there's a lot of nomenclature out there, uh, some of it confusing, some of it uh, helpful. Uh, and so hopefully today's presentation will help clarify the differences and the benefits and the add-ons that the M364 or the Microsoft 365 licenses uh, provides. Um, next slide. We're going to do a couple of polling questions throughout the stack just so that we get a good uh, a good feel for who's uh, uh, the audience. Uh, uh, please check all that apply. Uh, which Office licenses do you currently own? Do you have Office 365 subscription? Have you looked into the Microsoft 365 subscription? Uh, the next one should actually say Office 2016 with software assurance. So if you bought Microsoft software assurance, two, three years software assurance, so you get the upgrades. And then the last one is if you just own uh, perpetual Office licenses. So please just check the ones that uh, all that apply to you. That, uh, that helps us understand what, uh, what licenses uh, you have out there. I'll leave this up for, okay. All right, good. And so with that, so there we go. Let's see. Uh, so it looks like 63% of you have office licenses, which is what we expected. And, and a good, a fair amount of you already own the M365. Some have uh, software assurance and then about 19, 20% with perpetual. Great. Thank you very much, Marsha. Okay. With that, uh, I'll hand it off to Jeff. I'm monitoring. This is Jim again. I'm monitoring the questions in the chat. So if you have a question uh, for Jeff or for me, uh, please put it in, in the question. If it's applicable to what Jeff's talking about, I'll, I'll interject. Uh, if it's something that we want to answer towards the end, we'll, we'll answer towards the end. I'll and we'll try to get all the questions. So with that, all yours, Jeff. 
All right, thanks, Jim, and thanks for uh, thanks for having me on the call and giving me the opportunity to uh, uh, to speak to a large number of uh, participants and really, you know, hopefully educate um, you know users on the Office 365 experience and and really differentiate the. Um, um, the difference in between Office 365 and Microsoft 365, you know, as you mentioned, you know, the, the naming conventions aren't always uh, um, easy to understand, and there's a lot of confusion. So hopefully, after this call, um, those, those any any confusion that is out there will be alleviated and um, be more educated on the different offerings that are available through Microsoft. So. Um, how I want to start is really at the ground level and really, you know, you know, where Office 365, uh, the building blocks. And this is what, this is where we're at. We have our business plans and we have our enterprise plans. Um, we really look at it where the business plans fall into the users that just need the core products um, and the enterprise users are where it needs more of the advanced uh, offerings that do come with, uh, come with Microsoft. So kind of breaking it down, starting at just the Office application. So we do have two different offerings that, that can be provided. One is just Office 365 Business and then Office 365 Pro Plus. Now, when you purchase these offerings, you're actually going to get the familiar desktop application um, that you, know, you may be used to, but you're also going to be able to access Office Online. So you're going to get both versions, but this, these products will actually give you the desktop app um, that can be downloaded and installed uh, right to your laptop or your right to, right to your laptop or to your desktop. <clears throat> And then we can look at just the base cloud services. Now, this is going to expand things a little bit more, and these are really good for, uh, you know, for startup companies that that small SMB that really need to get um, the basics out there, but don't really have the um, the capital to, um, you know, spend a ton of money. So, what these cloud services are really going to get you is they're going to get you Office Online, but they're not going to get you the Office desktop application. But in addition to that, you are going to get Exchange Online. You'll be able to get SharePoint Online, uh, OneDrive, um, Teams. The collaboration features will all be in there. So it's going to give you uh, all the main features that you do need just at an online level, and everything will, of course, be hosted into um, in, in the cloud. Now, these are what we traditionally used to call the hero SKUs with Microsoft. Office 365 Business Premium and then Office 365 E3 or, or E5. This is going to take those cloud services that I spoke about as well as the desktop application and give you really everything that was offered with, uh, with Office 365. So these were the, the, the top plan. That's why you know, I mentioned this is why we call them the hero SKUs. So again, this is going to give you your desktop app and all your cloud services um, as well. Now, a good footnote: these can all be combined into one single uh, one single account. So, um, a common um, um, misconception is that if I have one plan, can I not have the other? And all these plans can be combined within within a single Office 365 account. So, you can have Office Premium, um, Office 365 Business Premium users residing in the same tenant as an E3 user. Big big uh, two big bullet points: business plans do have a 300 C cap. Um, it is a hard cap, so if you do buy 300 seats of business premium, uh, if you do have to buy seat 301, uh, you will have to move to um, a, a, a separate plan such as, a, such as an enterprise offering. The enterprise plans do not have a seat cap, and neither one of these plans actually have a seat minimum, so that you can buy a, a single seat and still be compliant. And then in addition to that, this is where you'll be able to um, also purchase add-on services, uh, Project, Visio. Um, dynamics as well uh, can all be added on to this uh, to the solution as you uh, as you scale up. Now I mentioned these are these were the uh, the hero SKUs. So now we're going in again business premium, Office 365 E3. Now what we're looking to transition to is users moving into Microsoft 365 Business. Now, this is basically taking a suite of products, which is Business Premium, and then building another suite on top of it into Microsoft 365 Business. Now, I will go more in depth into, the, into these offerings, but this is, where, this is when you're gonna start to add in uh, the security features. You're gonna start to add in the device management 
um, capabilities. Um, you're also going to be able to um, um, add on the Windows desktop operating system as a, as a subscription service. So this is really now giving you everything that Microsoft uh, Microsoft has to offer, and this is really where the focus does lie uh, going forward, as knowing that security is such a huge, uh, such, such a hot topic um, in the in the in the workspace today. And then same thing, Microsoft 365 Enterprise. This is taking those E3 and E5 plans and adding in those security features that I spoke about, device management piece. But this is also going to be able to add voice capabilities as well. So if any users are actually looking to get into get into a voice solution and move their PBX, their cloud PBX into uh, Microsoft, this is where you're going to be able to go. So now we can offer a you know voice as part of the collaboration tools that we're able to uh, we're able to speak of. So again, these are the four key offers. I want to you know, really bring everything together. Um, while I do say Microsoft 365 is the uh, is is the new hero offering that's out there, these Office 365 Business Premium and E3 offers are um, still going to be out there. But to clear up that confusion that was spoken about, when you're looking at Office 365, it is a component of the Microsoft 365 solutions that are now uh, available in the catalog. And this will take us to Microsoft Security. Yeah, I got a quick poll up here. Uh, what mobile devices uh, solutions are you using today? You could select all that applies. Uh, mobile Iron, AirWatch, uh, Citrix's Zen Mobile, Moss 360, uh, Microsoft's Intune, or other. Or your firm may not have a mobile device management. Please uh, select whichever ones apply. And I think this will address most of it in, in the legal industry, knowing that a lot of firms are mobile iron air watch, uh, but let's see what we got here. Okay. All right. Interesting. So there's a fair amount of Intune users already. Um, so that's, uh, that's an uptick knowing that the, from looking at previous ILTA surveys, um, Intune was not as, uh, uh, was not one of the leaders. And now it, it seems to have ellipsed, uh, um, eclipsed mobile iron and air watch. And there's a fair amount of folks with mass 360. Great. Okay, and then there's about a quarter of you that are are not uh, do not have a mobile device management. So that's interesting because uh, that is uh, Intune is bundled in with the Mass 360. And I, uh, just a quick question: uh, uh, We've got uh, Jeff. Uh, other than the other than the uh, 300 the 300 seat cap, what's the differences between M360 Business and M360 uh, Enterprise? Um, there will be some, a, a handful of assorted um, 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 advanced features that won't be available. So if you're looking at, um, a, at a solution that's going to give you, you know, say, remote desktop services, so if, you're, if you need that, you know, that shared computer activation, um, that's actually something that, say, Office 365 Business will not be able to offer. You would need to get into, um, in, into an, um, an enterprise plan. Um, if you're looking at just business premium or business essentials and you need some of the uh, um, entry level security features such as message encryption, um, that's going to be something where you want to go into um, go into an enterprise plan. And I actually do have a slide coming up um, um, in a few that will give a little bit of a highlight of, of, the, diff of the different comparison. And I think that can pass also be sent out um, as a follow up, a collateral from the from the call. Great, thank you. And then just two quick housekeeping notes. Yes, this event is being recorded. And the folks who aren't seeing the poll, it's possible that has to do with if you have the Zoom app or using the web interface. Okay, all yours, Jeff. Okay. All right, now let's go into a little bit of deeper dive with, uh, with Microsoft 365. And really, as you can see through these three bullet points, it's the security feature and it's the security features and the device management piece in here. So, this Microsoft 365 will one not defend against any kind of cyber threats that um, are are known or even unknown um, in, the, in the in the world today. So it's going to protect uh, your your organization um, before before a possible attack can actually become a serious threat. Um, it's going to protect bus your business data, so um, the files that you're working on, things that are stored within your 
um, what you know within your own you know your own data center, um, what your users are you know working on. It's going to protect that actual data and prevent any possible leakage of confidential data that might get out um, to users to people that you may not um, it, it may not be meant for. Um, and then securing the devices, you know, as we become more, you know, more mobile, um, you know, more of a BYOD, bring your, bring your own device world. Um, Microsoft 365 will, um, will, will help secure those devices that your users are using. Um, so really kind of, you know, capabilities, it's all the capabilities of, you know, I just should say not only Office 365 Business Premium, just, just, just Office 365 in general, uh, plus all these additional, um, all these additional features. So kind of going into um, into this, this is really take a, a takeaway slide. Um, but when it's saying defending against threats, it's going to be able to you know, check links, um, you know, as as you're as you're clicking on them. And this, these are links that are maybe either sent uh, via email or uh, via Teams if you're using you know for any collaboration tools or what you know what was Skype. Um, so it's going to be able to check those links right at the time of click um, of clicking those links. Um, Going to be able to en enable anti phishing policies, um, enable multi factor authentication. So, um, as a user you know, logs into their uh, whatever device they are logging into in the morning, uh, you can set you know, multi factor authentication just to make sure that um, you know, they're getting that second layer within a, within a phone call or um, you know, a, a mobile device that they're, that they're also accessing. Uh, protecting protecting business data, um, so, you know, again, sensitive emails, um, you know, sharing of credit card information. Uh, something that's really great, depending on the vertical. You know, if you're looking at, you know, uh, you know, medical facilities, the health, you know, health profession, um, law offices, government um, uh, officials, uh, really being able to protect that data um, from uh, um, and, and and encrypting all the data that's out there. And then the securing the devices, as I said, being able to secure what you you know what users can or cannot do with those with their personal devices uh, when accessing corporate data, um, and then even going as far as removing business data when uh, um, when when the device gets lost or stolen protect, uh, potentially. To kind of jump a little bit more in depth, um, defend against cyber threat. This is really um, the basis of Office 365 Advanced Threat Protection. Um, so now this is something I think a lot of users this 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 visual that's on the screen it's probably pretty familiar um you know you you we're all getting sent various links throughout the day um you know whether it's from a coworker um a friend or you know just just anything that's being sent you click on it sometimes you just don't know some people you know they'll go they'll hide the email that or, or that that u r l and try to you know try to scam someone into clicking a link that's pretty malicious. Um, what advanced threat protection will actually do is check that website in real time to make sure that this isn't um, a, you know, a phishing pond, um, site or you know something that could be uh, potentially blocked by your by your organization that you don't want people to to access. So again, it's going to check in real time, flag it if you know if it is malicious, and then block someone from from actually clicking that link and and possibly uh downloading or or attaching any malware to the to the organization um it is very intuitive as well because it's going to detect um possible malware that you may not even know about so as i mentioned before it will it will prevent attacks that are known but also unknown so there's there's something that's out there that you just don't you don't know about hopefully this um, this will actually protect your your organization from uh, from getting that unknown that unknown attack. Um, and again, protecting those Windows devices against any suspicious uh, uh, suspicious ransomware um, that might be uh, that might be out there. Hey Jeff, quick question: uh, yeah. Are these are these features also within the advanced threat protection, which you can currently be added to the E3 plan? Yes. Yeah, that's a good point. So all the, it, it, I kind of I mentioned at the at the beginning that these products is you know Office 365 Business Premium or E3 is a suite. It's a collection. Of, it's a collection of products. Pretty much any product 
in here can can be bought um, can be bought standalone. So if you do want to purchase advanced star protection on its own, you're able to do that. Um, that that's not a problem. I'm actually going to highlight in one of the slides um, really kind of the differences of breaking it down of, of purchasing purchasing products a la carte as opposed to purchasing a complete suite and getting the full offering. But to answer the question, yes, these products um, can all be sold standalone. Super. Thanks, Jeff. You're welcome. Okay, now I'm going to go to uh, protecting business data. Um, now, I think like myself and probably everyone on the call, we spend a lot of our day uh, via via email um, and and communicating online this way. So, who know, when you're sending an email, I'm sh if I was looking out at everyone in the in this uh, that's, that's on the call right now and asked them to raise their hand, how many people have actually you know, started typing out an email and things auto populate and you accidentally or you almost accidentally send an email out to someone that it's not meant for. Um, or you're ac you're trying to attach a document to send to a coworker and that coworker, you know, that, that document, you picked the wrong one. Um, it's happened to everyone. It's common. Protecting the business data. This is going to this is going to help uh, control that control that access and and prevent um, you know users that you do not want to see particular information from seeing that that particular information. So this is where uh, things like encryption and data pol and and policy data policy is going to come into come into play. So from here. I can set different encryption levels that I want to want to put on an email and 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 how wide range I want it to be set throughout the organization. So if I want to set a policy at, at the organization level to have all emails with an attachment on it to be encrypted automatically, you can do that. That way you can make sure that any attachment that's going out that is, is going to actually be protected. You can control your access to the data um, even even when it, after you actually hit sun. So the, 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 the example on the screen, Alex Wilbur. Now, if I'm sending this piece of information with credit card and bank account information over to Alex, I do not want anyone other than Alex to actually see this email. So I can set policies that this email goes to Alex and nobody but Alex. So it goes to him. Alex has to sign in and authenticate to prove that it is him, and then he can view he can view the actual attachment and the the potential confidential information that I'm sending to him. I can set a policy that prevents Alex from doing anything with that information. He can't he can't forward the email. He I, I could set the email to auto expire within a certain number of days if I if need be. That way he sees the information and then it goes. A, kind of a, a joke people bring up to me is like, oh, it's kind of like a self-destruct button, and it is in a way. It is a self. It is a self-destruct button. Um, this is a solution that's great for you know again for legal um, verticals, um, you know health vertical, um, you know where they're consistently sending out information with you know confidential customer data um, um, on it. Also a big thing. Um, advanced archiving so you're going to be able to archive all this data for as long as you want um, I know you know you're looking at uh, HIPAA for example they have different policies that you need to keep uh, um, legal data for a, a minimum of, of, of seven years or so I'm not, I'm not entirely positive on that but you could set a policy that all emails that are sent received whatever are actually going to be saved within that organization. So whether or not that individual user, or that individual employee leaves the company, um, that data will still be saved, and they'll be you'll be able to access that information um, at a later date if if needed. Hey Jeff, let me uh, let me interject. There was a couple of questions about how does Mimecast compare to Office 365. Um, I think that uh, I'll give a short answer on that is uh, a lot of the third party products out there do have features that are not in Office 365 or Microsoft 365 advanced threat protection, but um, you may not be using those features. I think uh, the earlier poll question comparing uh, what mobile device management 
people use. The, the, the mature products like AirWatch and Mobile Iron out there have a pretty comprehensive feature set, um, but firms are finding that Intune, even though it has a, a subset of those features, are, does meet your requirements. So uh, um, I can't speak to all the features that Mimecast has, um, but it's, it's worth you doing a quick comparison. And then I think Scott put out there a link there for jump to 365, if you want to refer to that. Uh, I think it's fair to say that um, the advanced threat protection has a subset of what Mimecast has. And like in most cases, it has uh, the features that the firms are looking for. Back to you, Jeff. Okay, great, thank you. Um, so another another big component the third I guess the third bullet point of that of that one intro slide is securing the devices. Now it it's safe to say that a vast majority of of users are out there um are have a smartphone, whether it's an iOS device or it's an Android device they have a smartphone and with that smartphone very likely accessing corporate information i know on a day-to-day -day basis i sometimes sit at my desk and i'm actually looking at email on my phone as opposed to my laptop um i walk across the street i go to the i go to the cafeteria grab some tea i'm probably reading my email while i'm sitting there eating eating uh eating lunch so while i'm using my person my personal device to access corporate information you have to be able to secure that that corporate data and what I'm actually doing with that corporate data on my phone. So from here, as an IT administrator, I can create all kinds of policies to be able to control what users can or cannot do with that information. And I have some pretty cool visuals that I'm gonna um, go into in the upcoming slides, but um, this is gonna give this, I like this, I like this slide because it gives a good screenshot of where you're able to go to actually set those policies, it's really super easy. Um, so you can set it and you know you put those policies in place to say, I want you know my users to only keep the corporate data and emails within approved applications. So I could say I can only have that Excel spreadsheet that was sent in to my corporate email to be stored within my corporate OneDrive account. We can wipe data very very easily um, it's a very it's a very simple process in case of a lost phone or a stolen phone or I just leave you know I just leave the company you're you're able to actually do that and all these all these policies are set right within the the office 365 admin center so the same portal that you're managing the, your Office 365 licenses in, you're also managing your security policies right here. Super easy, basically just you know, toggling an on on off button. And you can see in the screen, you know, requiring a you know, requiring um, a, a, a pin to access off the applications or a fingerprint, things like that. You can get pretty granular um, when when it comes to these uh, comes to these policies. So I kind of want to show this in, actually in motion. So when you start looking at the mobile device management, um, you know, I, I, ha I have my smartphone, I have my, my tablet, my iPad, what have you. And within there, I have all my corporate applications. So my Outlook, um, Excel, my, my, my OneDrive corporate account. Um, but in addition to that, of course, I have all my fun stuff. I have my, I have my Facebook account, my Twitter account. Um, Netflix. I, I wish I could have put a, a, a Disney Plus uh, um, app uh, in there, but I didn't. Um, but yeah, things like that. So now what mobile device management and Intune is really going to be able to do is take that and basically put into two different ecosystems and take your managed apps and really divide them up from, from your personal applications. So how this is really going to work is I get an email, um, say, say Jim sends me an email, um, you know, an Excel file with all the attendees from this call today, let's say, and I want to take that, um, take all your information, I want to save it to my personal application, a, a, a box account, let's say, that can be blocked, where I'm not able to take that corporate file and put it to a personal application and use it for later. My IT administrator sets that and says, nope, you're not able to do that. So I won't even get the option to um, click paste to be able to, 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 to do that. But I take that and I go, okay, well, I'm gonna copy and paste it over to a Word document, 
Absolutely, you can do that. It's a corp it's corporate uh, it's a corporate application, so you're good to go. And then I just, again try to take that, save it to my personal OneDrive account. Again, I'm blocked because the two ecosystems are separated, and I'm, I'm I, I get stopped right there. Now I try to take it, I try to post it into my OneDrive uh, corporate account, and it's good. So I can take that document, save it to my OneDrive, so I can access it from all other systems, but it's still being prevented from being uh, from being saved to uh, um, to personal to personal storage. So this is another layer that's going to prevent any kind of leakage of company data simply by by restricting what you know you can do from a cut copy paste uh, uh, motion uh, with the uh, with the uh, um, with the applications. Now, when I go into selective wipe, how this is really this is really going to work. Now, I travel on a pretty on a pretty frequent basis, so. Um, I'm going through, you know, airport to airport. Um, half the time I'm usually running late, and when I'm running late, I'm, you know, you get into panic mode, you start forgetting things. Um, you know, I, I jump into, uh, I jump into an Uber to get to get a ride to the airport, and I'm in such a rush, I forget, I forget my uh, my phone in the back seat of the Uber. Um, I, I get on the plane, I, I I take my phone out of my pocket, and I put it in the uh, uh, the front seat pocket. Um, of the plane, and I quickly deplane uh, de and I leave it there. Um, worst, you know, even a, a worst case scenario, I, I you know, I, I walk out at the end of the day and I decide I'm never coming back. And I take my phone with me and I take all my corporate my corporate data uh, with me. Now my company they do not want me to uh you know if i leave the company they don't want me to take the corporate information with me or if i lose my phone and leave it or leave it somewhere who knows who's going to pick up the phone and try and try to hack in now with all these different policies that are out there uh, one with the multi-factor authentication should hopefully protect it but if someone still, still is able to get in how am i how, how do i know that they're not going in and accessing my corporate my corporate data so very easily, I guess click uh, click a button, and my IT administrator can remove all that corporate data uh, with within a second. Um, for example, we actually just had um, a new employee start uh, recently, um, actually on Monday, and they lost their previous company on a Friday. And they said by the time that they got home, all of her corporate data was wiped right off her phone. She wasn't able to do anything with it. So she couldn't take that corporate data and bring it to us and use it for her own for her own purposes. Hey Jeff, now, uh, Jeff, a couple of quick uh, MDM questions. Mm -hmm. uh, first one: uh, Do the policies extend to native email functions in, in the mobile phone, or, or does it does Outlook app need to be installed? So, can you create a policy to restrict the use of native email functions? Um, you can, you can, you can, you can set it at the, at the, uh, at the application level within, within that actual phone device. I, if that, I believe that's the question, but you're able to set those, uh, you're able to set those policies as well at, at that level. Yes. So at, for the native email client on iPhones or Androids. Yeah. Yep, I, and I actually, to be honest, I actually use the native client um, um, as well. So you're able to set you're able to set those policies at, at that too. I actually use both. But I find myself using the native app um, as opposed to the Outlook app uh, um, going forward. Great. Okay. Uh, other question is: Can you restrict taking screenshots in company apps and not in personal apps? Um, I knew this question would come up. It's all it's always asked like, how can I do? Um, take take a picture, and yes, there are ways to prevent um, um, doing screen caps of cer of certain things where it won't actually it won't actually screen cap. Now, this isn't going to prevent someone from sitting and be that's on the call right now from taking a picture of their monitor and taking and taking data that way. That there's no way of restricting, but there are ways that you can set up restrictions to. Um, prevent any kind of uh, any kind of screen caps. Got it. Thank you. Yep. Um, so one la one last point on the uh, on the selective white feature that I want to go into is a, a question comes in or a lot of questions get asked to me. Um, I wipe the data off my phone. 
what happens next? I, you know, if I get, you know, my, all of a sudden I find my phone at a later date, is my data gone? And it's absolutely not gone. All this information is being stored uh, within within the cloud. So all you would really have to do is just come back and read, you know, if, you, if a user buys a new device, um, they would just have to re-register their new device within within Intune, and they'll be able to get all their information right back. Um, same thing if like they just find their phone, they're able to just you know you know do a you know I guess an unselective wipe and reverse the reverse the process and load that information back in. So when you do a selective wipe, it's absolutely not removing that information um, from existence. It's just removing that information from that particular device that you had uh, that you had wiped. So this slide right here is really to answer a previous question that was asked about having to buy um, or being able to buy these products um, a la carte. Now this slide's pretty generic and it's really meant to be speaking about not only buying Microsoft products a la carte, but also buying third party solutions that when you start purchasing these products one by one, um, you know, mobile device management, threat protection, um, antivirus features, um, things like that, it starts it starts adding up um, um, pretty quickly. And you know, this slide's focusing on Microsoft 365 Business, of course, but when you start looking at buying all these features a la carte, you're looking at, you know, forty, fifty dollars um, a piece to really get the full gamut of products. Whereas if you buy a you know Microsoft 365 business solution, you're looking at simply twenty dollars a month. And for an SMB level, you know, you're really getting everything that uh, Really getting everything that you uh, that you need, plus those security features, at a pretty substantial, uh, pretty substantial savings. So this is where it's a good move to uh, for those users that are just looking at you know Office 365 business or something like that. To really make that push and add the security features on at a very low cost savings uh, uh, for you, and also making it pretty easy to manage, like I showed with the uh, uh, single portal and being able to manage your Office 365 licenses as well as your security features right within that single pane of glass. And this slide is just uh, a, a takeaway slide. I think it's gonna be sent for, uh, you know, possibly as, as a follow-up, but here's where, um, to, to answer the, also to answer the question as far as these offers stand alone and really what's the difference between them. This this is it right here. Uh, so it's gonna show you, you know, you know, here's what you're able to get. Um, you know, if you purchase, uh, say, Microsoft 365 Business as opposed to Business Premium, for example, and this is just a small, spe um, you know, snapshot of products, very small sample size, three offerings. There's tons of offerings, but these are really the key, the key plans that are being that are being focused uh, uh, focused in on. Yeah, this is a great. That's a great slide. Yeah, so that's. Uh, if we could send that out, we'll send it out as an individual link. If not, it'll be, obviously it'll be part of the recording. So uh, next, next poll for uh, Windows Build. What uh, what Windows Build are you currently running? Are you still on Windows Seven? Are you running uh, 1709, 8, 1803, 1903? Um, I think eight, I forget what to include 1809 in there. But um, if if you would just check which ones, which build you currently have, that would be great. Like looks like a lot of folks were in 1903. That's great, and I think 1909 is just being released. If it hasn't been released, okay, fair balance, great. And then there's still a fair amount of folks on Windows 7, and uh, that's uh, I imagine some of those are cutting over shortly. But great, okay, thank you. Perfect. So Windows Windows 10. Um, now there is a. a Third component of Microsoft 365 um, that that's in, that is also available. So we started with you know Office 365 offerings, and that being the building block, that being the productivity portion of the of the Microsoft 365 suite. And then we started looking in again device management, security management. The third component is Windows, and it, it really does get I don't want to say overlooked. But it does get overlooked. It it is a very key feature, but you don't hear it mentioned as much as I think as as, as you should. So what what Windows 10 is going to give you? It's going to give the user an enterprise level subscription of Windows that will consistently keep you up to date. 
So as you saw from, you know, from, the, uh, from the polling question, you know, Microsoft has really um, steered away from the Windows XP, Windows 7, Windows 8, um, um, naming conventions and having those particular updates. I'll even say Windows Millennium. I, I remember uh, working when that when that was launched, but um, kind of streaming away from that and making it more of a of a of a version update uh, going forward. So this is where you know really where Windows 10 subscription is going to be able to um, uh, be able to play. And a, a a huge component that we look at is the upgrade uh, potential. So as we do come to end of life for Windows 7 and 8.1 Pro and, and, and just the older versions in general, this is going to give you an upgrade option to move from those older versions, bring it into you know into the most uh, the most current version, and at the same time keep it aligned with the Office with with your Office 365 um, subscription. So again, it all. It, Everything's falling is, is moving to the cloud. This is really what is this, this piece is driving home. Um, so again, it's an SMB. It's an SMB uh, uh, friendly model. Um, do have to note that there are no downgrade rights. Um, I know that does, does get asked, but it, it is going to keep you on the most uh, on the most current version. It is the same licensing convention as Office 365, so a single seat minimum, and it's and it's a yearly subscription. Um, there is no seat limit, but you're also able to install on multiple multiple devices. So again, as you're you know you have a desktop and you know maybe a home laptop or you know and, and an additional laptop on top of it, let's say, um, you're able to you know you're able to license uh, multiple devices as this is a per user uh, per user offering. And this last bullet point that I want to touch on is the rollback functionality to uh, to Pro. Um, so there's always that concern that if a subscription uh, lapses or um, let it you know let it expire for whatever reason um, you do roll back to just the Windows Pro um, uh, functionality out there so you're not going to lose your operating system you'll be able to st still uh, continue on you just may lose some of the enterprise uh, uh, features on top of it. Hey Jeff what if you what if uh, a user has more than five devices? Um, whew, if that's a good question. If that's the if that's the case, um, they would need. There are ways to expand upon it. Um, it is gonna. De it is also gonna depend on what the devices are. So if they're looking at, um, you know, depending on mobile devices, desktops or laptops, you can expand upon the five. But if they have more than five mobile devices. Then at that point, I think they would need to buy an additional license. Um, but they can. It, it really Office 365 in general it comes down to, um, you know, if they have a, you know, if they're trying to install like on a, on, a, on a Surface tablet or a laptop, they can expand upon it a little bit. But it, um, if they if it does go above that, then I think the additional license would need to get purchased. Got it. Thank you. Okay. Uh, next polling question around Teams. Please select the statement that most appropriately applies. My firm is currently using Teams. My firm is planning to use Teams. My firm has no plans of using Microsoft Teams. And I know there's a few more questions in the, uh, in the, in the question chat. I think we're going to save some of these for the end of the call. And Jeff, we got about uh, 17 minutes left. Okay. okay, so a fair amount of firms don't use, uh, have no plans of using Teams. Um, uh, and then there's a uh, looks like about 23 currently use it, and another 37 plan to use it. Great. Okay. Helpful. Thank you. All right. So what this leads us to is Microsoft Teams. So I've spoken a lot about the uh, the collaboration features um, with uh, with Office 365, and Teams is wherever is 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 where that is headed to now. I, I do want to start off by saying, do not think of Teams as a replacement for Skype. That's a pretty common thought in the um, out there is that you know Skype is going away and Teams is the Teams is the is the replacement, and it really isn't. And here's why: it's because Teams is built on yes, the the, the foundation of Skype, but it's also really built on the foundation of, of SharePoint as well. On top of it. Um, so think of it more of a new collaboration tool that is out there for Microsoft rather than um, a new version, uh, a new version of Skype. 
So I've mentioned again, mentioned a few times um, before, you know, we, you know how how we how we do our day to day business re has really changed a lot. You know, working on multiple teams, collaborating um, outside the outside the company. Um, in the time leading up to this uh, to this webinar, Jim and myself, we were on calls calls pretty frequently, working through the topics of this discussion and working on the PowerPoint that we're presenting today. And we were able to do that through the collaboration tools such as Teams and really you know work on this PowerPoint together. And we're outside each other's organization, but we were able to do that, be able to do that very easily. So this is what Teams is really going to be able to um, be able to do, and really being able to, you know, to transitioning of the of the of the work world today. You know, 72% of the of the of the workforce out there will be working remotely in the very near future. It's more common uh, working from home, working on weekends. Um, it, it, it's, it's, it's commonplace now. Um, when I, and I started talking about the security features as well. It's, it, you hear about the big name companies, you hear about the target security breaches, the, the, the breaches that happen to financial institutions. Um, those, those snag the hot, those, the headlines, but really more majority of the, of the breaches that do happen do take place at the SMB level. And the reason for it is, um, is is the fact that the SMBs um, do not have the ability or the skills to deal with the security issue. They don't have that implementation in there. So the security features with Teams and the collaboration features that are involved really going to help uh, help alleviate that. So when we start looking at you know the, the workspace in Office 365, you know one having that having that you know that chat functionality, of course, and that's really the the basis of Teams. Um, having that hub for uh, uh, for teamwork, where you're able to easily collaborate on on, on documents with within your team in real time, um, is, is, is huge. Um, you, you need to have that today. Um, and again, it's going to also, of course, give you the security uh, the security features as well um, on top of it with this whole solution. So I mentioned with advanced threat protection, you know, sending links um, via email and things like that. Advanced threat protection is also going to protect links and documents that are sent over um, um, with, within Teams on top of it. So if I send a, a link to Jim or a coworker um, that might be flagged as malicious, it'll get protected in my email, but also get um, protected within the collaboration features with uh, with Microsoft Teams. And you can you can make it very customizable um, so that it's tailored to like what your workspace is really doing, and and make it uh, make it ideal for um, uh, an ideal setup for you, um, as opposed to an, um, just a general um, a general layout. So to kind of go through some of these features here, this is an, a little screenshot of what um, what Teams actually um, what, what Teams actually looks like. But you know the communication feature, so. You know, I could I could easily have a chat with uh, with a coworker or a group of coworkers, um, and 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 collaborate and share files within uh, within that com um, that that, uh, that that chat function. Um, establish meetings and manage meetings uh, as well. And then I mentioned before the voice capabilities. You know, I could use this as my phone system. Um, pretty frequently, I will. Uh, call a coworker or, or jump on a, um, a Teams meeting and just dial in through Teams as opposed to picking up my handset and, and, and punching in a number. Um, able to do it right there within that single uh, single pane of glass. Um, of course, the collaboration feature is mentioning uh, sharing files. I'm able to you know share a file within within a user or set up an individual team of of of, of my entire you know my entire business unit and you know work on a spreadsheet work on a pipeline and all the all the changes are noted in real time um you have the you have uh you know the co-authoring uh right in there so you're able to you know see as other people are making changes and and, re and you can review the changes as well to make sure someone didn't actually make a mistake and put something in incorrectly you can you can you know, you know correct uh correct mistakes if uh, if actually needed um, the customizing, uh, the custom uh, piece of it, um, being able to um, you know, download third-party apps. So if there's any kind of uh, uh, again third-party applications or things you want to implement into Teams, you're able to do that. Um, I know the list of uh, of apps and bots and so forth is actually is, is consistently growing. 
and um, you're able to to integrate those applications right within uh, um, your team site. And then again, the security level features, which is huge. Um, you're able to manage, um, you know, the you know the, the different security um, uh, policies that you want to set. You're able to do that right there within the within uh, within the team's functionality. Um, these slides, um, interesting. I kind of went into these um, just now, but a um, little bit more information as far as. Uh, um, what I said, being able to, you know, connect and, and, and the co-authoring piece, I think, is very huge nowadays. Um, again, I, I know for myself, you know, we're working on uh, different shared documents and we're consistently updating them. And we have, you know, you know 10, 20 people in a document at the same exact time and we're all able to, uh, um, able to work on it. Um, the, the, another feature that I do love is being able to access uh, uh, Teams, uh, you know, Teams Anywhere. Uh, again, I, you know, I'm, after this uh, after the session, I'm probably going to grab something to eat, and I'll probably sit and look at my Teams uh, Teams app on my phone, uh, be able to catch up on a few things just by just by doing that. Um, uh, the online meetings, um, again, very very huge. Um, I, I I just mentioned I use Teams with an, um, right on my phone, but I also have Teams installed on my home laptop as well. Um, so if someone uh, needs to get a hold of me at the you know after hours at night. Uh, something important is coming in. I could just grab my my personal laptop if need be and work on the work uh, uh, work with them right there. Um, so you're able to you know stay connected no matter where you are, um, what time zone, uh, what device you're looking at. You're able to have that meeting um, pretty easily um, all from all from one single all from one single page. Now, what I want to what I want to mention here is that you know, going back to me saying you know don't think of uh, Teams as a replacement for Skype. Um, part of that is um, misconception is that people will constantly consistently think, can I buy a Microsoft Teams license? Now, Microsoft Teams is not uh, sold as a standalone feature. Microsoft Teams is part of these Office 365 bundles that I spoke about. It's part of Business Premium, it's part of E3, um, Microsoft 365 Business, the, 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 again, the suites that I had spoken about. So you do, and the reason for it is because it's built on the technology of Skype and SharePoint and multiple other products to make it work. So that's why Microsoft does not um, currently sell Teams as, uh, as a standalone. But what we can offer is that there is a Microsoft Teams trial that is available. So I believe it's a, um, I believe it's a, it's either a three month or a six month uh, um, on trial. But you can uh, initiate a Teams trial to use these features within your, within your environment, and then at the end of that trial, hopefully you will see the benefits of Microsoft Teams and really what it can do for your organization, and then move to um, a Microsoft 365 offering to really get all the full features and really move into um, a, a complete stack. So the point of this is really kind of tie into the fact that you know, if you if you haven't used Teams, this is a great way to get started with it, um, transact the trial, get using, you know, get going with it. And I can guarantee that once you start using it, you'll love it, and um, hopefully make an easy transition to um, one of the Microsoft 365 suites. Great, and I know there's a couple of questions in the queue. I'm gonna um, hold them off until the end. Uh, I think this is our last section uh, on Azure. Uh, please select the statement that, pro that most appropriately applies to you. My firm is currently using Azure, planning to use Azure, no, no plans of using Microsoft's cloud Azure. And about 60% of you currently use it, and another 22% are uh, planning to use it. Great. Okay. Jeff, we've got about seven minutes. Uh, we'll see if I can get to some of these questions at the end. Okay. No, great. I, 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 spent, I, guess I spent a lot of time on the modern workplace piece in Microsoft 365. Um, I'm pretty passionate about that piece of it. And, um, but I, do, I did want to make sure that we left time for Azure. And that polling question is actually great. Um, it's really good to see that. Uh, a large number of people are already on Azure, um, so this is going to make this section very uh, very easy. But um, 
really what I wanted to go into with, with this part of it was um, as, why would you want to move to to Azure right now for the users that are on, not on there? Um, a couple of things here, you know, one, the compliance the compliance features um, are, are going to are going to be key. Um, most important and the support um it's it's out there it's everywhere and the support for windows and the support of sequels coming up this is the time to move to azure because of it um the 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 cost of upgrading a windows server a sequel server and then also at the same time having to refresh the hardware um on top of it it's it's pretty expensive and and the dollar amounts add up and and you know a lot of a lot of people just may not be ready to make that to make that move um and then also being able to scale pretty easily. Uh, if you need to, you know, add storage, um, um, you know, increase capacity needs, you know, you're able to do that right there without having to, um, you know, really implement a whole new solution, which could take, uh, which could take a lot of time and take a lot of, uh, take a lot of money. Um, when looking at Azure, you know, here's where we look at, you know, with the with the key scenarios is, you know, the virtual machine deployment, um, being able to deploy that, uh, be able to deploy that um, in the cloud and 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 manage those uh, uh, manage those solutions. Um, the back, you know, the backup features as well. Um, you know, being able to protect your on-premise you know, on-premise files, um, being able to take that and move it into the cloud as a backup solution. Um, it, it, I think that. Is really uh, one of the from what we've seen um, the the how people are getting started with uh, with Azure is those is those base features you know the backup the storage piece of it um, so it's a good way to get into uh, um, to get started with Azure for those who haven't really um, um, gotten into it and then the um, disaster recovery um, you know you hear about it you know with you know I'm up I'm up in the Northeast but you know if you have you know snow snowstorms coming through something that may uh um potentially you know knock a system out for example or even worse if like you know hurricanes so on and so forth uh being able to back up that data um and 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 be able to you know avoid any downtimes if your uh, if your data center does go down this is what you're going to be able to to utilize azure for um, so when we start looking at the end of support uh, functionality, this is where that this is where that urgency really comes into uh, uh, comes into play. And these are these are just some of the benefits. And I, I don't in the interest of time, I, I don't want to. I'm not going to really get into all of these, but um, you know, here are just some some uh, some good benefits that are going to be uh, going to be out there for you. So um, you know, the high availability, the be able the ability to scale. Um, you know, reducing uh, reducing that downtime. If you have a hardware issue, um, um, you know, it, it's not managed within your data center. This is within Microsoft's uh, uh, Microsoft data center. And I, I like to just, I like to jump just to you know benefit six. You know, improved IT staff productivity. Um, you know, I, I mentioned with Microsoft 365, you have a lot of users that don't have an IT staff. Um, you know, at this point, you don't have to have an IT staff to manage your Windows Server. Move it into Azure, move it into the cloud, and let Microsoft really take care of it, um, take care of it for you. And then some of the benefits that are going to be um, again available: um, the productivity piece. Um, you're only paying, you're only paying for what you use. So um, if you need to turn down a server when people, when when you're not using it, such as weekends or nights, you're able to do that, and 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 again, only pay for what you're actually. Um, for what you're actually using, um, and you know, protecting you know, protecting you know what matters to you the most. Uh, um, knowing that your files are secure, knowing that they're backed up um, in case of a, of a disaster, and you know, for the backup, you can choose you know whether it's uh, you know it's you know, a geo redundant, whether it's globally located. Um, but if that backup, you know, if you're located in the in the northeast, you know, your backup could reside in the, on the west coast. Um, so it's segregated and um, it will be um, in, in separate data centers for a more secure backup. And then again, the, sec the, the enterprise grade uh, security um, and saving costs with actual, with actual hardware. So we're right at the end. Um, Jim, I can, I'll kick it, back, uh, kick it back to you. Uh, can you hear me, Jeff? Yes. Okay, good. Sorry, I lost my uh, Q&A questions. Um, yeah, no, thank you very much, 
Jeff, I think uh, uh, we're uh, at the top of the hour. Um, there's evaluations. Marsha is going to want you guys to please respond to those evaluations. Uh, it's very helpful for uh, for future ILTA uh, for ILTA webinars and presentations. Uh, if I haven't answered a question, here's my email address is listed here. I'm happy to get back to you uh, on that. And I think at the, we're at the top of the hour, so I didn't want to go over. But uh, thank you all for joining. Thank you very much, Jeff. Thank you very much, Marcia and Adriana, for putting this all together. And if you please take the time to answer the uh, evaluation, we'd be uh, grateful for your time. Uh, thank you so much, um, Jim and Jeff, for the great presentation and Cornerstone IT for sponsoring. And um, as you mentioned, please do take the evaluations, which are up on your screen. And Jim, I can share, actually, I could pull the report with the remaining questions and um, you know, could address those via email with the folks. That would be great. I appreciate it. And thank you, everybody, for attending. We'll look forward to seeing you all in the future. Thank you.